Welcome traders to another Tickmill Earnings Report preview with me, Patrick Munderley. Before we jump into today's report, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views expressed by me today are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report. We are looking at DraftKings. DraftKings are set to announce earnings before the open of New York trade today. Looking for an EPS of... 87 cents there earnings per share on revenue of 424.42 billion. I would highlight that uh, there is a, a whisper number on the street that the EPS could come in as high as 95 cents. So that's something to bear in mind. We have had a positive development in the sports betting sector in general as investors do start uh, the Massachusetts legislature passed a bill to authorise retail and online sports wagering on professional and collegiate sports. The governor is expected to sign the bill. The House and Senate has been going back and forth on the issue of college sports betting before compromising to allow college betting, but not on in-state schools unless they're playing in a major tournament like March Madness. The Massachusetts tax rate will be 15% for wagers placed in person at a retail betting location and 20% for online bets. The taxes will be paid by the sports betting operators and not the bettors themselves. The tax rates are significantly lower than those in some other states on the East Coast. And so Boston-based DraftKings uh, is an obvious beneficiary of sports betting being legal in its home state. JP Morgan analysts launched coverage on DraftKings with a market outperform rating. The firm expects DraftKings to see a positive re-rating as the company nears profitability. JP Morgan view DraftKings as a high, high investment in its daily fantasy sports product in the years leading up to uh, this uh, legislation position the company to successfully cross-sell its database into online sports betting. Management has proven its ability to gain market access in legal states with the, in, with the industry leading US population exposure. As a result, JP Morgan see DraftKings growing revenue at 19% year over year through to 2030. While uh, JP Morgan believe they're in the early innings of an online gaming sector, which they believe DraftKings can maintain a top share in North America online gaming, driven through cross-selling and its superior technology capabilities in the sports betting uh, technology sector, uh, leading to uh, high levels of profitable growth. Looking ahead, uh, JP Morgan thinks DraftKings can leverage its platform as an acquisition vehicle to cross-sell into higher margin products. Uh, they have assigned a price target of $25 to DraftKings based on blend of four times the 2025 to 2027 sales estimates and 12 times 2027 EBITDA estimates. DraftKings is noted to be currently trading at 1.6 times uh, its sales book, uh, down from its historical average of 10 times book. Uh, the price target set by JP Morgan implies more than 80% upside for its shares. So let's look at some statistical uh, trading patterns around the uh, DraftKings earnings release. DraftKings shares have moved lower in the immediate aftermath of earnings, uh, five out of nine previous reports. On average, stock moved down 2% in the first day after uh, releasing earnings. Based on the previous nine earnings releases, DraftKings more likely to trade higher one day after earnings for an average gain of 0.4%. On average, the stock has moved 2.9% one week after earnings. In terms of the implied volatility, the options market is pricing in a potential 10.5% move on earnings, and the stock has averaged in general an 8.2% move in recent quarters. So from a flow and sentiment perspective, there's been notable buying uh, 1,624 contracts of the bullish $18 core expiring today. Uh, option order flow sentiment in general has actually also been bullish. Investor sentiment going into the earnings has 62% uh, looking for an earnings beat. DraftKings shares have drifted 24.8% uh, post its prior earnings announcements. Using the last 12 quarters of data, the average drift between earnings announcement is 1.3%. Let's pull up the DraftKings chart and see where we are from a technical perspective and where the trading opportunities might be for us. So we can see here that uh, DraftKings has traded down into this $13 area, the high volume node on the weekly chart and we have consolidated there and we have recently broken out of on the daily time frame 
a ascending triangle. So I'm looking now, any pullbacks into that prior resistance now to act as support just below the $15 level. I like to be a buyer there or on a break through the 17, uh, $17.50 level. And I think we can grind it out here to that um, $25 target that JP Morgan have certainly achievable. Um, beyond there, uh, if we can maintain support into that 1750 level, I'd actually be looking for a 33, uh, 3380 as my upside objective uh, for DraftKings in uh, in coming months, based upon this last leg of corrective upside that we saw, and that's uh, that gives us that symmetry swing target. So 3380 would be the upside objective. Again, that's not going to be happening uh, in the near term, but this is one that I think is a slow burner and certainly one that I, uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, build a long-term position in. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.